Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand independent comic books. Dan Loeb, billionaire hedge fund owner, wants layoffs at Disney. He wants cost cuts. He wants ESPN to be sold. He wants changes. He's probably going to get them. Let's go into a couple of articles. Uh, before we do, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications and give me a thumbs up when you like it. This is not Zero Hedge, and Zero Hedge is a great uh, financial publication. They have a great attitude. They also boil things down really well. Um, we also have this article on uh, CNBC, and it's in a number of places. But we're going to start with Zero Hedge. Dan Loeb reveals new Disney stake, urges cost-cutting, board refresh, and an ESPN spinoff. Well, First of all, who is Dan Loeb? He's what's called an activist investor. Also, you know, activist investor is something they used to call uh, green mailers. Uh, Carl Icahn is the granddaddy of activist investors. Uh, he's a guy who would push companies to make changes that would benefit the shareholders. The shareholders would make more money, the value of the stock would go up, uh, and that's what he did. Uh, the term activist came uh, to be more common last, you know, 20 years or so uh, because they didn't like the term green mail and whatnot. And it sounds like you're you're working positively on behalf of shareholders. And you are, but you're also working to make more money for yourself. But this is going to, this is going to very likely result in layoffs at Disney because that's what he wants. He wants cost cutting, he wants them to restructure how they do things. Uh, he wants them to get ESPN out of the company because he thinks the company can make a lot uh, more money and be more focused if they didn't have ESPN because even though it's successful now, it's really sports and sports is not brands. But what's really interesting about this, and we'll get to this in a second, what's really interesting about this is while he doesn't mention woke stuff, you you get a sense that there's something, you know, he, this is just phase one. This is step one because he's asking for adding people to the board. Let's get into the article. Billionaire activist Dan Loeb unveiled a new significant stake by his hedge fund, Third Point in Walt Disney, which he disclosed in a letter to CEO of Disney, Bob Chapek in which he urges the company to consider a spinoff of ESPN. So that would be a sale uh, of ESPN, or basically they would give SP ESPN to the shareholders, which would make it a tax-free transaction in most cases. And that would mean um, the value of the stock would go up in anticipation of getting ESPN as like almost profit sharing, if you can get that idea. so. He wants to have a spinoff of ESPN. He wants to cut costs and add new directors as part of a sweeping restructuring meant to boost shareholder value in the company, which has lost a third of its market cap since October. What does that mean? Okay, cut costs is always firing people. It's always been that way. When a company is going to cut costs, they're firing people. That's that's what firing people means. Uh, now, who would they fire over at Disney? You know, who who is the chief cultural officer over at Disney? You know, who are the people that are really adding to Disney making money? And who are the people subtracting from Disney making money? Do they have extra people that they're just kind of giving opportunity to, but aren't really part of the bottom line? Those are the people that Dan Loeb is talking about. We're going to have to look at, well, who the hell is Dan Loeb? You know, what's his background? What does he, you know, uh, promote and spend money on? And what kind of a guy is he? We actually have some information on him. I did a little bit of homework for you. Uh, so this could be a thorough video. So I'll get into that in just a moment. This is not the first time Loeb has engaged with Disney, having previously owned shares in the woke mouse before selling his stake. So he tried to get Disney to do things in the past. He was not successful. He wants to again. So how much money did he spend? Well, he is a billionaire on his own. I mean, he's, he's a, a, a worth a lot of money. But his hedge fund runs about $14 billion um, worth of money. So he's got $14 billion that he invests on behalf of 
probably some of his money as well as investors' money, mostly investors' money. And in a hedge fund, you do that to take a percentage of um, how much money you manage. Usually, they, it depends on what the deal is. Believe it or not, they make millions and millions of dollars just managing other people's money, um, whether they make money or not, usually. So in his case, uh, he put a billion dollars into Disney stock that was from a separate Reuters article. So a billion dollars is not a controlling interest in Disney. It's not like he's going to buy Disney, but um, it's substantial enough. You know, Disney, all the stock together is worth $228 billion. He only has a billion. It's not like he's got 5% of Disney. That would cost more than $10 billion. But he's very well known, this Dan Loeb, and he's influential. And his goal as an activist is to create a narrative about what Disney should be doing, what they should do versus what they are doing, and to get investors to follow him. Separately from Elon Musk, who is putting up his own money and getting some investors to go along with him, and then getting some debt to buy and get control of a company. Totally different situation, okay? But still, he's very likely to cause change at Disney, this uh, Dan Loeb. Quote, ESPN is a great business that currently generates significant free cash flow. But basically, that's profit. Loeb wrote in the letter, which also cited the network's streaming content as a benefit. Despite these advantages, we believe that a strong case can be made that the ESPN business should be spun off to shareholders with an appropriate debt load that would alleviate leverage of the parent company. So what does that mean? Just so you know, if he was to convince Disney to say, look, let's get rid of ESPN. Just give it to your shareholders as a dividend, as profit sharing. What is the value of that? I don't know. Just pick a number, let's say $20 billion, whatever it might be. Maybe it's worth even more, $40 billion. And then let's also take some of Disney's debt and put it on top of that company that we get rid of. So that would reduce Disney's debt and it would also increase the value of the stock price. But they wouldn't have ESPN anymore. So he's suggesting that. Besides the ESPN spinoff, Loeb also called for Disney to add new board members cut costs, and continue to suspend its dividend. If they're going to add new board members, the purpose of a board of directors is to control decisions at the company, major decisions, not really minor ones, but to create like a major initiative. One might be um, we are going to focus on developing our brands and not allowing them to be vehicles for uh, social justice and progressive ideas. That's something a board could actually say. And the company would have to follow what the board said. If not, those uh, employees would be warned and then they'd be fired. Um, a board also decides on the CEO's compensation a strategy for the company. Uh, and other major executives have to be approved by the board. And the board is supposed to basically represent the interests of the shareholders between the shareholders and the actual managers and employees of the company. So wanting to change the board members is wanting to change the strategy and the direction of the company. And it's not just about ESPN. It's not. It's not about just what he's mentioned in this company with cutting costs. The board, They don't need new board members to cut costs. They really don't. They need new board members, members to, to protect a new strategic direction for the company and to make sure that executives are focusing on making money for the shareholders, which is ultimately obviously going to be protecting the integrity of the brands. Doesn't mean he's going to be successful, but that's what he's trying to, to push to do. But he's pretty sharp, this guy, so he's, he's got a damn good chance. Besides the ESPN spinoff, um, okay, also the dividends. I'm sorry. The dividends, uh, Disney suspended its dividends, which means it stopped paying out um, profit sharing to stockholders, which did hurt the value of the stock a little bit because, you know, if you're not going to give profits to shareholders, then the only value that a shareholder is going to get is when the stock goes up in value. But those, those suspending the dividend meant they could use that money to pay off their debt. Disney does have significant debt. They do. You know, how much money in debt does Disney have? Well, they've got um, total liabilities of, 
$101 billion. Now, they have assets of $203 billion. And this is as of um, uh, October 2021. 20, uh, um, but, uh, you know, that's a $100 billion difference. That's that's their book value. That's, that's great. But $100 billion in debt is still substantial. And it does need to be paid. And they also need a lot of cash to finance, like making their stuff. You know, they're gonna make stuff, gonna pay for offices and things like that, pay for film and promotion and all these other things they're doing, and uh, subsidize their losses on streaming. That takes cash, it takes cash, 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 cash. Disney's not running out of cash. However, reducing a hundred billion dollars in liabilities would not be a bad thing. It wouldn't be a bad thing. Especially if they're really wasting a lot of money on staffing up to do things that are not productive, but maybe they think are socially responsible, like SJW stuff, um, or um, you know, uh, damaging their brands like they've been doing, like they did with Thor, like they just did with uh, that Buzz Lightyear film. You know, creating controversy for no reason. They're supposed to be selling entertainment, not creating controversy, right? All of that, and of course, the diminishment of the Star Wars brands. I mean, these are things that, you know, Loeb is not talking about right up front. But is he eventually going to talk about it? Maybe, maybe not. I think he will. I'll show you why in a minute when we go over his um, background. It's, it's an unusual background. He's a little hard to figure. Bloomberg notes that while, and Bloomberg, of course, Bloomberg.com, Bloomberg Business Channel is a big deal. Uh, Bloomberg notes that while Loeb's outreach to Chapek appeared to be friendly, his influence is likely to push uh, Disney and put pressure on Disney to justify its costs and explain why ESPN belongs with the entertainment giant. It may also pressure the company that has gone woke and is gradually going broke to reverse its outlook. Because keep in mind, don't forget what happened in Florida when Disney decided to you know, threaten and pressure um, the government in Florida to respond the way they wanted to with social agendas. And Florida, you know, said, no, we're not doing that. And not only that, they revoked their status as uh, Disney's own government where they control their theme parks. The loss to Disney um, over just the theme park dispute, and that may be why um, Dan Loeb is involved, is to kind of if he can show a new direction to Florida, they may be able to prevent Florida from going through with what they said they're going to do, which is to remove Disney's uh, authority. Their own, they, they have their own governmental authority, incredibly, in um, Florida, where they run their theme parks, which means they can do whatever they want almost. I mean, you know, they're not going around committing crimes necessarily, but like all the building codes, the taxes, and all sorts of things for their theme park business in Florida are really, really subsidized and very easy for Disney uh, and within their control. And they blew that. They, they blew that by getting into a fight with the governor and the um, lawmakers in Florida. So it, it's possible that Loeb could help them, especially if they get Loeb gets his new um, board of directors members on the board to make a new case to Florida saying, hey, you know, we're sorry, we have a new attitude here. We're going to focus on what we should be focusing on. And Florida might be comfortable with, with delaying things or, or giving them a, a break to continue if they behave themselves. We'll see. But the, the loss to Disney on what they did in Florida and getting in trouble with Florida could be $50 billion. I mean, it could be even more potentially. It's astronomical. It's, it was really not worth it to mess with Florida like that. While Disney shares rallied last week after earnings beat estimates, uh, they've been on a decline for much of the year as investors fretted about a slowdown in streaming growth. The sales bounced 1.3%. Okay, the shares bounced 1.3% to $123 uh, in New York. And this is uh, from yesterday. So this is the entire um, article. Uh, talking about cost cutting. I mean, if you look, I'm sorry, not the article. This is the entire letter from um, Dan Loeb's third point. And I'm going to include a, a link to this. I, I'd like you to be able to see it. I mean, we could go over this in, in real depth or whatnot, but 
just to, to see what's going on here, you know, number one is cost cutting. And, you know, where does Dan Loeb get off saying, hey, listen, you need to cut your costs? There are industry averages that just basically show, are your costs high for the business that you're in or are they low? It's not about spending money on streaming. What it's about is your overhead, you know, your employees and what they're accomplishing to do what they're supposed to be doing versus what's done in other industries. And when you've got a company like uh, Warner Brothers Discovery going in and doing what needs to be done, you know, why shouldn't Disney be doing that? And the answer is to, they probably have mass numbers of executives that are just there to push woke agendas all over the place. Um, and that costs money. You know, those people have to be paid if you're actually gonna have those people at the company. Um, it also creates uh, a massive uh, distraction. It creates extra costs because sometimes you're hiring people just to give them stuff to do. And those people create more work for other people, which increase overhead even more. And the bottom line is, if the, if the merit of the work isn't supported, uh, you know, if these people that they hire don't actually know what they're doing and aren't there to generate cash for the company, then they're going to get kicked the hell out. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what Dan Loeb wants to have happen. That's number one. And then number two, dividend. They want them to, to continue to not pay dividends to shareholders um, so they can pay down the debt. And maybe even buy shares or invest in building the business. At Hulu, they actually want Hulu to be merged more quickly into Disney+. Plus. You know, what's interesting about this too is, keep in mind, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery, um, that only exists as separate from AT&T because another guy went in who was just like this Dan Loeb guy, who was a hedge fund manager, who's known to shake up companies, uh, went in and talked to management, worked with management on a strategy and helped management to get rid of DirecTV and help management to get rid of Warner Media to ultimately merge it with um, Discovery to make Discovery Plus. So these uh, hedge fund guys actually do create change. They're respected by shareholders. They're respected by industry people. If Disney changes, it's going to be because of this guy, most likely. I think it's, I mean, it's a really, it's a 50-50. Are they going to change or not? Um now, with ESPN, he's just suggesting that ESPN is a distraction. I think the interesting thing about getting rid of ESPN is even though they've tried to woke up ESPN as much as they can, there's just so much they can do to destroy sports uh, the way that Disney can destroy their brands. Once ESPN is out of the way uh, or it's decided that they're not going to do a deal with ESPN, I think you're going to see Dan Loeb uh, zero in on the woke stuff and say it's time to really... Uh, cut it the heck out. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting to know who this guy, uh, Dan Loeb, is. Um, he's a little hard to figure. So just looking at his political activity, because it'll kind of give you some picture, according to the Wall Street Journal, Dan Loeb has been active in education reform and the efforts to legalize gay marriage in New York. So Dan Loeb, very pro-gay marriage. And you might wonder, like, so is he gay or what? He's not. He's straight. He's a hedge fund guy, but he's very into LGBT philanthropy. Why? He must think it's the right thing. And, you know, that's fantastic. But what, what's interesting is he's also very into school choice, like really aggressively into school choice. He believes that parents should have the chance to take their tax money and send their kids to charter schools if they want to instead of forcing parents to go to the, the local school, you know? So that's very strange because usually when you're pro-LGBT, you know, those are the same people that could be pro, you know, LGBT in, in, in the progressive movement anyway. You know, those will be the same people that'll say, oh no, you can't fund charter schools. We need to control education. So oddly, um, he supports two things at opposite ends. It's It's... So it's really difficult to get a read on what he would do. Um, this same article mentions that Loeb has held fundraisers for uh, President Barack Obama and, and former governor of Massachusetts, Mitt Romney, who was running for president then. 
Uh, so he's su- kind of supporting both, which, you know, Trump used to talk about that. I like, look, he would give money to Hillary Clinton and he did to her, her foundation because he wanted to. You've got to kind of do that. But he sincerely does support gay marriage and LGBT rights. You know, what does that mean? I don't know. He's he's very pro charter schools. So it I I don't I don't I don't know. He wants cre- criminal justice reform, and he funds the Brenner Center for Justice, which is not is it's a claim to be nonpartisan law policy institute. It's not. It's a deep state organization, and the Council on Foreign Relations is a globalist entity. He's a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. So what is he doing exactly? Exactly, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, honestly, I don't know what he's doing. But he is asking for cost cutting. He's asking for layoffs at Disney. And we know what that means. We just, you're going through that with Warner Brothers Discovery now. They're cutting stuff that doesn't make financial sense. That's the point. Um, he also wants them to, to look at new strategy. He wants them to have new board members to make other changes. He also is a very serious business guy. He's pro this agenda and pro that agenda and pro conflicting agendas. But he does know what makes money and he's he's smart enough to know that destroying the brands at Disney is not good business. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Tell me if you think this guy is serious business or if he wants to destroy the brands at Disney so that he can push agendas the same thing as in Florida. I, I don't think so. But tell me what you think. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.